If you don't respect my opinions or farts, then's no future between us. Let's consider a divorce. I'm growing tired and distressful towards my husband who selfishly imposes his opinions. That night, I quietly accepted the suggestion of divorce brought up by him. He is looking at me with a smug smile. I really can't predict where our relationship is heading to. I, a 35-year-old housewife, have been living with Robert in a downtown apartment since we married five years ago in spring. Deep down, I've always wanted a child, but that dream has never come true. We once considered consulting a fertility specialist together. However, Robert insisted. Even if we had a child, a quiet life with just the two of us wouldn't be so bad. And so, we decided on that. After getting married, the passing of Robert's parents was a significant trial for us. Because of that, our plans for starting fertility treatments got postponed many times. Robert, literally a dominant husband, has that kind of personality. I originally started as his team member, and he was my boss at the company. Because of this, he can't help but point out small mistakes or misunderstandings. This pattern was already established before we became a couple, and continued after marriage. Writing it this way might make him sound unpleasant. However, he has a very warm side too. For instance, times when I made a mistake at work or was about to give up in difficult situations while I was still his teammate. He didn't just scold me, he provided constructive and beneficial advice. I felt that he genuinely respected me. When my beloved grandfather passed away, he was there for me comforting me with heartfelt words. That made us to start sharing deep affection, leading us to decide to marry. Afterward, I left my job and have been living as a full-time housewife, supporting Robert in his daily life. Emmy, I'm home now. The train was crowded, and I'm a bit tired. Thanks for working so hard late. Welcome home. Almost without exception, the antique wall clock points to 9 p.m. when Robert comes home every evening. Generally, the house is quiet by this time of night, but his return is the exception. He holds a senior position in the company and has a lot of responsibilities. You must have had a lot of meetings and work today? Well done! As I gently folded Robert's jacket and tie, I spoke to him. With weary steps, he headed to the sofa and sunk deeply into it. This has become a part of our daily routine. Seeing his exhausted face, I can feel the pressure and stress from his work. He must be so tired, I always wonder how I can make him feel better. He begins his meal in silence, but when faced with his favorite dishes, a faint smile occasionally breaks through his tired expression. Once he's done eating, he heads for a bath. I prepare towels and new clothes for him and start cleaning up after dinner. After his bath, he heads straight to the bedroom and collapses into bed. Since his promotion, he seems particularly drained. He supported me during my most challenging times, so I want to be there for him now. I lost my father when I was in middle school, and my mother right after I entered high school. After that, my kind grandfather took me in and raised me. It felt like my grandfather was my real parent, loving and nurturing me thoroughly. His warm smile healed me every day, and I always wanted to show my gratitude. Once I started working, I began saving money to take him on special vacations or dine out at his favorite restaurants. About three years into my job, my grandfather collapsed due to an illness and passed away. The memories of our time together didn't get off my head, and my pillow was soaked with tears every night. During that time, Robert, who was then my boss, noticed my feelings and comforted me with warm words. Touching his genuine kindness, I felt grateful. I thank him, and I want to live for him. On a sunny day off, our home phone suddenly rang. 
Hey, Emmy. It's me. Sorry it's been so long since I last called. It was a call from Robert's younger brother. It really has been a while. How have you been? What brings you to call? Actually, I have something to discuss with my brother. Can you get him for me? Of course. Just a moment. I relayed the message to Robert reading a magazine in the living room. Hey, it's been a while. What's up? Is there a problem? Robert, who had poker face until now, seemed to lighten up and even laugh during the conversation with his brother. His brother, 15 years younger than him, is like a child to Robert. Due to the age gap, Robert holds him dearly. I know he was delighted when Liam got married two years ago, but I sense some concern in his voice. That sounds tough. Are you okay? Robert's voice was full of worry. Something was wrong, and I was staring at him. I'll support you as your brother. Robert went into a deeper conversation. What happened? Is something wrong? My brother. It seems he's been laid off from his job. What? Laid off? I was so shocked that I raised my voice accidentally. A while ago, when I went out drinking with him, he did mention that things weren't going well at his company. But I never thought he'd be laid off. Robert seemed to struggle with this news, sinking deeply into his chair. I felt sympathetic to his surprise. Liam is quiet by nature, unlike Robert. He has always accepted me as a real family member. Even when Robert occasionally made harsh comments at family gatherings. Robert, that's a bit rude to Emmy. He cared about me. Liam's wife is also very thoughtful. I truly respected their relationship. I never imagined Liam would suddenly get laid off. I wondered if there was any way we could help them. The thought of supporting Liam and his wife during this tough time weighed heavily on my heart. Is there any way we can help? What exactly do you have in your mind? Perhaps emotional support, job advice, or maybe temporary financial support. Isn't there a way we can help Liam and his wife? You really don't understand the harshness of society. You, who don't face the world outside, can't comprehend the stress of someone who works every day, especially in a situation like this. It's irresponsible to say you want to help without giving it much thought. Your role is to support in silence. His harsh words left me speechless. My intention to help seemed to have angered him. I'm here as your family, I said, holding back tears. Liam is not your family. You and he are not related by blood. His cold words hurt me deeply. I hadn't expected such a barrier between my husband and me. I hadn't expected him to be so distant afterward either. Until he returned, I pondered over his words and attitude. After that, he became even colder towards me. What's with this meal? Can't you be considerate like Liam's wife? She's always keeping their house tidy and efficiently doing the chores. I was taken aback by his sudden accusation. He had never criticized me like this before. I don't understand why you're getting mad at me. I was utterly shocked by his unexpected words. Our communication had been lacking recently, making it difficult to even meet each other's eyes. That day, Robert was organizing items from one corner of the room to the other. It felt different from the usual end-of-year cleaning. I wanted to ask what he was doing, but given our recent strained relationship, I refrained. Then, he spoke to me. Hey, what are you doing? We should start preparing. Prepare? For what? We're handing this house over to Liam and his wife. What? Why did you decide that on your own? I told you to stay out of this. Don't defy me. You said you wanted to do something for Liam, remember? I did, but giving up our house is a different matter. Where are we going to live after leaving this place? We'll think about that later. Right now, supporting Liam is the priority. It's my duty as his elder brother. It seemed Robert had made up his mind. I knew Liam wasn't the type to kick us out and take over our house. Robert handed me a piece of paper. This conversation is over. 
Let's get a divorce and leave this place immediately. It was a perfectly filled out divorce form. I was overwhelmed with mixed feelings. However, feeling the distance between us lately, I also felt some relief. Perhaps this was the beginning of a new path for me. I picked up the scattered divorce papers from the floor and filled them out, taking deep breaths. Robert watched with a smug expression, but I could tell it was superficial. When I finished, I asked a crucial question. Do you think you own this house? What? This house and land I inherited from my grandfather, where I spent my childhood with him. Do you remember that? Robert's face turned strange, and his eyes widened. How do you plan to give away a property in my name to someone else? While bewildered by my question, he seemed desperately searching for words. Ah, uh, well. Remember how you moved into my house casually because your rent was too high before we got married? And I've always paid the property taxes and various expenses for this house and land. You never contributed to those costs, did you? I, of uh, sorry, that is. Robert was at a loss for words. Maybe we should end this. This isn't something to conclude in a split second. Should I be the only one to stay calm? Have you ever considered how selfish you are? Bringing up a divorce out of the blue? All the emotions and grievances I had kept inside started to pour out. How much time had we spent together? How much had we valued our relationship? But given the recent events, it might have been just my one-sided perception. I never imagined our relationship would end like this. Emmy, I need you to calm down and listen. Given how things have turned out, there might be some underlying issues. I want to carefully consider our positions. If you wanted to stay, why didn't you say so from the start? You're the one who suggested the divorce, right? Please understand how I feel now. The trust and bond I believed in vanished in an instant. Saying that, I held the meticulously written divorce papers in my hands. Today is Sunday, so the city office is closed. I plan to proceed with the process tomorrow. Robert couldn't accept the situation and wandered around the living room, his eyes red. I never imagined it would come to this. He murmured in a soft voice. This house is mine, so I want you to pack up and leave as soon as possible. Now that our relationship has ended, it's difficult for both of us to coexist in this small space. It took some time to persuade Robert to finally leave. In my heart, he was already a thing of the past. No need for words of gratitude or any special considerations. Eventually, Robert left the house with a heavy step. I watched his back intently. News of our divorce reached Robert's workplace rather quickly. He seemed uncomfortable there. Detailed rumors about the reasons for our divorce and Robert's behavior during our married life spread throughout his workplace. Thinking about his position, he honestly answered when questioned by his colleagues and teammates. Some days after the divorce, I was leaving a real estate agency after looking for a new place when I unexpectedly locked eyes with someone. His gaze held a hint of obsession, as if he had been waiting for me all along. A chill ran down my spine. I started walking, trying to keep my ex-husband out of sight, but he followed. Reluctantly, I asked what he wanted, and he confronted me with words I never expected. I never told you, but I hated and resented you. What? Why? Taken aback by the sudden confession, I raised my voice in surprise. That's when I learned that he had been thinking I was responsible for Liam's layoff. In fact, since we got married, there had been a series of unfortunate events like the death of Robert's father and Robert himself breaking his leg. The health condition never improved and Robert's father had always been frail. Robert's broken leg was a result of him drinking excessively. Despite all this, Robert seemed to have felt that I was the cause of all the troubles. So, you thought that I brought misfortune, and you resented me for that, 
Knowing this fact, I was shocked and appalled by Robert's hasty judgment. Blaming others without understanding the context and the truth. I truly wondered why he works as a leader in his company. The boss I once admired, when did he change so much? Thinking back to when I was married to him, it feels like my heart is being squeezed. But Emmy, the truth is, even after we broke up, bad things continued to happen around me. What kind of misfortune? I looked with keen interest, and Robert slowly rolled up his sleeves to show me. Actually, three months ago, there was a massive fire in the apartment I was living in. Not only that, I lost my wallet in the city, made a significant mistake at work, and haven't heard from Liam at all. I'm really worried. So you're saying misfortunes didn't stop even after our divorce? To be honest, I can't deeply sympathize with that because those incidents are your responsibility, and they have nothing to do with me. Emmy, I'm begging you. I want you to come back to me. I'm genuinely struggling without you by my side. Look, we overcame so many challenges as a couple. Remember when you were working full time? I supported you, right? And when your grandfather passed away, I did my best to support you, didn't I? How about you stop blaming others for your problems? Shouldn't you reflect deeply on your actions and past choices to find the root cause? Before you accuse others, it's crucial to reflect on your own actions. With those words, I started walking away from his line of sight. Emmy, wait. Let's talk one more time. Emmy. I could hear my ex-husband's pleading voice from behind, but I didn't stop and kept walking forward. A few weeks later, I received a surprising message from Liam. Emmy, I used to call you sister-in-law, but that's not the case now, right? I have something to tell you about my brother. According to the information from Liam, when Robert suddenly offered his house to Liam, it seemed to be a one-sided decision by Robert. My brother has always been concerned about how others view him, and that characteristic often led to issues. We as a couple sincerely apologize for his disrespectful attitude towards you. I felt that Liam was genuinely a kind-hearted person. I couldn't help but wonder why there was such a difference in character within the same family. To be honest, I feel that your decision to divorce was for the best. I genuinely wish for your happiness in the future. Thank you for saying that. I genuinely appreciate it. Fortunately, Liam received a new job offer and found a stable way to support himself. I've been thinking lately, and I've decided to distance myself from my brother for a while. There seemed to be a strained relationship between Liam and his brother for various reasons. Liam appeared to be considering reducing his interactions with his ex-brother-in-law gradually. After the divorce, and even possibly weakening his bond with his most trusted younger brother, it's probably something Robert hadn't anticipated. I genuinely hope he takes a moment to reflect deeply on his past choices and actions. More than that, I feel that it's necessary to completely sever ties from his life and future. That day, when I had an unexpected reunion with Robert, I was in the process of renting out my grandfather's cherished house for another family to live in. I can't imagine letting go of the house filled with countless memories I shared with my grandfather. I decided to get a new phone number, choose a new place to live, and completely sever ties with Robert. I'm only 35 years old. A new chapter in my life is about to begin.